where does this rank in terms of exciting games to look forward to in your managerial career? Um, I think, first of all, it's a, it's a well-deserved reward for the players and staff supporters that were here last year to, to earn the opportunity to play in Europe. But the fact that we've drawn such an attractive tie, um, I like to the fact that it's grabbed um, the attention of supporters so much in terms of the crowd that will be in attendance tomorrow means that there is that palpable area of excitement around it. Um, I think it's a tie that we're very much looking forward to, but ultimately for us as a players and staff, it's about progression. So while for others it, there will be a sense of occasion around it, for us it's business and we want to um, stay in Europe. Certainly my experience of being involved in it previously as a manager, I enjoyed it immensely. It has a different feel around it, but I would want more of it. I wanted more of it last season. I'm lucky I've had the opportunity so quickly to be involved in it again this year and it's um, to try and stay in the competition for as long as possible. Obviously, talk about the level of opposition you're playing. The beauty of it, though, is it's pretty early in everyone's season. You're not necessarily meeting them in November, December, where uh, there might be a different pathway to your seasons by that point. Does that give you a wee kind of fillip that you could get something from these ties over the two legs? Well, I think it's potential challenges you face when you're involved in European competition. Now, we've seen it, obviously, recently with Motherwell facing a team that were in mid-season. And undoubtedly, the longer you go into your season, I think it does provide a competitive advantage. So the fact that the league campaign hasn't started yet, else has only just begun, means we're, we're in a pretty similar position. Um, but I don't think it, it necessarily changes the dynamics. I think it's a tie we would always view as a challenging one, but one that we believe we can progress through. Um, that's certainly that consistency message has been there to the players all the time, that while we're playing against a good team, it is, it's certainly not unachievable for us to progress through, the, through this round. We all love football. We love these kind of events, these occasions the fans as you see have already picked up on it massively it's going to be a tremendous night at Tandice tomorrow night there are many stories that have been written about uh, surprises shocks upsets uh, legends and teams that have written themselves into history books it's a chance for your squad over these two legs to do that I think every big game you play in as a, as a player gives you that opportunity to do so I think you always want to have um, tangible achievement to look back on whenever you, then your career comes around, um, leave legacy, be part of something that people will talk about in years to come. And you referenced um, you know, players and achievements that happened, particularly around the 80s for Dungeon United, and, and those players, manager, are rightly lauded and will be forever by supporters. So you know, while we would have a long way to go to replicate any of that sort of success and achievement, what we do have within this tie is an opportunity to um, to create something, something significant. Ultimately, it only takes us to the next qualifying round, but in terms of the calibre of the opposition, the attention around the tie, um, and I think what type of marker it would put down in terms of the progression of the club in recent years would be a big one. Well, I think the, um, what they have is a clear identity around how they've developed as a club. And, um, you know, I think it can be a little bit lazy to just reference them as a typical Dutch team. They're always technically sound. I think there has been an adaptation within Dutch football. I don't think they all play the same way. I think that was something that we always um, commented on. Um, there are consistencies in how they do things in the attacking area of the pitch. I said about the model of the club, about trying to have this conveyor belt of players to come through in different positions. So when they sell players, they have a ready-made replacement. Um, so they will provide a, a, you know, be a proper difficult test. But I don't think it's beyond anything that we face from some of the teams in our own league. Um, so that is something that we need to be acutely aware of. I think sometimes you... I've always felt at times is we can go in with that um, inferiority complex in terms of Scottish teams within Europe. I don't think that should be the case. And hopefully some of the achievements in recent years from other clubs reinforces that point. So just to reiterate that point, a difficult challenge for us, but certainly not one that's unsurmountable. What's the objective for tomorrow night's game in particular? Well, I think for me, I've, I've had good experience in recent years, both the European ties and also playoff matches. Um, and so two-legged ties, are, when you think when you first experience there's a little bit of uncertainty around how you should approach it. But I think the first leg is just a game in isolation for me. It's about winning that tie. You know, you can look at what you need as a platform to give you a chance of progression overall. But I think for me, it's just looking at this match in isolation. And any match in isolation, you want to go and win. So that's, that, that's the objective for us tomorrow evening. How are you team news-wise? Anybody in or out from the week? Um, we are yeah, pretty much as we are. Obviously, Pete Pollitt remains out longer term, um, but with the exception of that, we are um, pretty healthy. Um, just waiting on confirmation of as he's better his work permit. If that comes through in time, then 
obviously he would be added to the squad as well because he's undertaken a few more days training. And Jamie McGrath, is that close? Um, yeah, it's a deal we would hope to conclude, um, but haven't done so as yet. It's so difficult for me to comment on properly, but certainly in terms of our um, desire to bring that player to the club, that is there. I think that's common knowledge now, um, and we are confident, hopefully, that that will be the case. He's obviously somebody you tried to get at Hibs. Is he somebody you've monitored over the past year as well? Yeah, I, mean, I've, I think when you do that, when you um, either work with players or identify them as players you would like to work with, you continually follow their career and their pathway and how they're getting on. So, um, it's somebody that I've been keen to work with in the past, um, and hopefully, as I said, hopefully I'll get that opportunity soon. Ryan, as a player, tell us what the dressing room is like, and the excitement about going into a European match. Something's not happened for a while. Yeah, it's obviously very exciting and the dressing room is very upbeat. It's, um, it's quite new to a lot of us. I think there's only one or two we've experienced it in the past. Obviously, Charlie and Tony being the obvious, obvious standout there, being at Celtic. And, uh, uh, you know, any big game like this, it's, it's important for the players to block out the noise and block out the occasion and focus very much on, on the game ahead. And that's something we've got to maintain tomorrow. Um, we, when, it's no surprise it's going to be a big crowd and a big atmosphere and a big show before the game and if, if that's all well and good but as players it's, you've got to sort of block that noise out and, and focus on, on winning the tie. There's always the anticipation when you call and you secure European competition as you did back in May um, when you, you watch the draws coming through what was your thoughts when you see Nalpa a famous name in European football? Yeah, well, I think it's it's probably on paper the, the toughest one we could have got. Um, you know, it was it was an exciting time. Obviously, watching the draw, it was a long wait, and and but it's it's gone so it's come come so quick from from where we was last season when we secured that. Um, but again, if you, if you want to do anything in these sort of competitions and and go anywhere, you've, you've got to be teams like like we're playing tomorrow if you want to achieve anything. And, the gaff touched, touched on it there that it's it's not unbeatable. It's it's, it's one where we believe we, we can win and, and go into the next round. But always the ice on the cake as well for supporters who come and obviously an increased attendance tomorrow. I think you'll have a huge following next week as well in Holland. Can you tell us what, what what do you want to take to them? What do you, is it? Stay in the tie, just give them a positive result and look forward to next week. Well, but yeah, we're very much positive about the game. We're certainly going in to in both legs to to go through to the next round. Of course, we are. Um, it's obviously an ideal trip for the fans. It's not. It's not hard to get to, to over to Amsterdam and make your way to Alkmaar there. It's so. It's it's been you know probably the best draw the fans got to wish for in terms of travel wise. And it's, again, it's a, it's exciting. It's a big club. And we we just we can't wait for tomorrow now. We can't wait to get the game going. And the occasion is obviously great uh, for the club, for the fans. But as players, it's I know it sounds pretty boring, but it's it's about the game and and blocking out the noise and and the occasion. On personal level, look forward to it. The first time in Europe. Absolutely, yeah. As I said there, it's been a long wait. You know, waiting for draws, waiting for dates. Um, obviously, you can imagine tickets. Uh, <laughs> players are getting up, getting. A lot of, a lot of contact of friends, family, and, and other people as well from from around the club for tickets. It's because it's a big it's a big game. It's going to be a sellout, and everyone wants everyone wants to be there and see it. Jack, how much influence will the crowd give to be the twelfth man for Dundee United tomorrow night? I think um, I, I think you can't underestimate at times how much energy can be provided by support. Um, I think there's times you need them in games when you get up against it and when you have difficult periods, but ultimately there's an energy that can be provided that can help you play the game in a, an aggressive manner. And you know, Aggression doesn't mean kicking people, it means about how positive you are in aspects you play with and without the ball. So um, undoubtedly they will be of, of massive help. It's, uh, for us as players and staff it's about harnessing it properly um, because it is a huge positive for it to have. Um, and undoubtedly it's a stadium at Tannadice that with that type of crowd in it generates a terrific atmosphere and said it's one that we have a responsibility to boost the performance that matches up. Looking at Alkmaar themselves, with, with media coverage these days, it's so much easier to, to get a good view of, of what's there. 
have you managed to get a huge influence of, of stuff coming from from Alkmaar and being able to see what's there? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an advantage in the modern game, disadvantage for us for opponents because they see a lot of you as well but certainly from our management and coaching point of view the footage that's available now uh, makes our jobs a lot easier in terms of having that awareness of opposition. We had somebody at the first tie in the Netherlands um, have watched both legs, have watched league games from last season, know people who work within Dutch football who hopefully are telling me the truth and helping me uh, when they give me information but yeah, you, now through a network of contacts and the footage that's available means that there are no real surprises. And Ryan, is this the biggest game you've played in in your life? It probably is, yeah. It's the biggest, certainly the biggest competition, of course it is. And I'm hoping it's it's more than two games and I have to go through to the next round and, and kick on from there because it's obviously a very big occasion and it, it, it attracts a lot of attention. They're the, they're the type of games you want to be in. Although I've touched on there again, I know it's a boring cliche, you've got to sort of put the occasion to one side and focus on the game. but. These are the games as a player, as an individual, you want to be involved in, and we can't wait for it. And, you know, I don't know if you've, have you paid much attention to, to the draw for the next round. You know, it could be kind of said that if you are to get past Alkmaar, it's certainly more favourable tie that would kind of be waiting for you there. Is that something that kind of comes into your mind at all before this game? I'm going to give you a obvious answer because that was a long question. Say no, I genuinely haven't actually looked at it. I probably could even tell you. I know a little bit about where the club's come from, but other than that, nothing. As I said, the focus has just been about um, tomorrow evening, um, and then the focus after that will be about Livingston on Sunday. And Ryan, for yourself, you know, just a few minutes before you know kick off, you'll be leading the team out of that tunnel, you know, a, a packed crowd. And what will that feeling be like for you? You know, walking into it to such a big game, is it just going to be completely focused on the game, or are you going to take in the kind of the, the crowd that's there? No, again, it's. <laughs> Again, it's a good, there's going to be a, ma a massive crowd, we know that, it's no secret. We've um, just been told there about the banners and the displays what are going to be out, but that's that's all well and good and, and you know, create, create a great atmosphere and these are these are the types of of environment you want to be involved in. Um, and, you know, hopefully it's up to us then to give something to, to the crowd to, to get behind us and, and really push us on. I've heard about in the past how... how how good the fans are getting behind you on European nights, and how special they are, and you know we, we've got to we've got to on the pitch provide them and and give them something to feed off to get behind us, and because we're going to need them, of course we are.